everyone, it's Mr. Charlton here, and this is Audio Story 494, and it is Mr. Men Monday, and the next story has been chosen by Eli. Hello Eli, and Eli has asked for Mr. Daydream. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. Mr. Daydream by Roger Hargreaves. This is a story about Mr. Daydream. You know what he looks like, don't you? Because you've seen him in your mind. You've seen him on the books that you've read before. It's also a story about a little boy called Jack. And you don't know what he looks like. But I want you to imagine it in your minds. He has blonde hair. He has a red jumper, blue trousers and brown shoes. Now Jack was a very good little boy. He always ate up all his lunch. I hope you do that boys and girls. He always went to bed when he was told. I hope you do that boys and girls. He always said, oh please and oh thank you but Jack was a daydreamer whenever he was supposed to be thinking about something he found himself thinking about something else daydreaming one day Jack was at school he was sitting at his desk listening to the teacher talking about history it was a very warm day and Jack was glad He was sitting at the back of the classroom, next to the open window. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, Jack saw something outside the window on the grass in front of the school. Something blue. It was small, cloud-shaped figure. Jack couldn't believe his eyes. The figure looked at Jack, looking at him, smiled and waved. Boys and girls, can you smile? Can you wave at Mr. Charlton? Thank you very much. Jack looked at his teacher who was still talking. Then he got up very, very quietly, ever so quietly, and slipped out of the open window. He crossed the grass to the strange looking cloud shaped figure. Oh, hello, he said. Who are you? I'm Mr. Daydream, said the figure. What's your name? Oh, my name is Jack, said Jack. I'm going off an adventure, said Mr. Daydream to Jack. Would you like to come with me? Oh, yes, please, replied Jack. Oh, very well then, said Mr. Daydream. And putting two fingers in his mouth, he let out the loudest whistle Jack had ever heard in his whole life. Boys and girls, can you whistle? Let's do it together. Three, two, one. A huge bird swooped down out of the sky and landed beside Jack and Mr. Daydream. Come on, said Mr. Daydream to Jack and climbed on the back of the bird's back. Jack climbed on too. It was a really enormous bird and there was plenty of room for both of them. Hold on, said Mr. Daydream. Jack held on tight. The huge bird flapped its huge wings and suddenly they were high up in the air. They flew faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster over the countryside. They flew over fields and farms and towns and hills and hills and towns and farms and fields and trees and valleys and vales and lots and lots and lots of different things until they were far, far away from Jack's school. It was very exciting. Mr. Daydream turned to Jack. Oh, uh, how would you like to go to Africa? He said. They were travelling so fast now. Jack just nodded his head and held on even tighter. And they flew and they flew and they flew and they flew across the sea. Suddenly, it seemed in no time at all, there below them was Africa. 
the bird landed in a jungle clearing, and Jack and Mr. Daydream climbed off the bird's back. It was very, very hot. Come on, said Mr. Daydream to Jack. Let's go and explore. So off they stepped, pushing their way through the jungle. Suddenly, in the middle of the clearing, they saw an elephant. Uh, hello, Mr. Daydream, trumpeted the elephant down its trunk. Would you like a lift? Yes, please, replied Mr. Daydream. And the elephant reached out his trunk, picked him up, and then put him on his back. Then he reached out his trunk again, picked up Jack, and put him on his back. It was very, very high. The elephant carried them through the jungle until they came to a river. Then he set them down on the ground and said goodbye, and went off back to the jungle. Oh, how are we going to cross the river? Jack asked Mr. Daydream. Uh, well, perhaps I can uh, be a little bit of a, a assistance, wheezed a particularly oily voice coming from the river. They looked, and right there was a crocodile. Use my back uh, as a bridge, suggested the crocodile. It was very, very helpful. They were halfway across the river on the crocodile's back when the crocodile grinned a rather nasty grin. All teeth and no smile. Then, flicking his enormous tail and shooting Jack and Mr. Daydream up into the air, the crocodile opened his horribly large mouth and waited. It was very, very frightening. Oh dear, gasped Jack as he looked down at that enormous mouthful of teeth. Oh dear, oh help, oh help, oh dear. Mr. Daydream, upside down beside him, put two fingers in his mouth and let out that very large whistle of his. Boys and girls, let's do it again. Three, two, one. <whistles> Suddenly, just as the crocodile's mouth was about to go snap, the big bird swooped down out of the sky. Mr. Daydream and Jack landed right on the bird's back. Whoa, said Jack. Oh, bother, said the crocodile. It didn't go to plan. Uh, well, I promised you an adventure, didn't I? Grinned Mr. Daydream. Oh, you certainly did, said Jack. And now I think we will go to Australia, said Mr. Daydream. And they did. And Jack learned to throw a boomerang so that it always came back to him. And now I think we will go to the North Pole, said Mr. Daydream. And they did. And Mr. Daydream fell right up in the middle of a snowdrift. It wasn't good. And now I think we will go to the Wild West, said Mr. Daydream. And they did. And Mr. Daydream found a huge ten-gallon cowboy hat. The trouble was, when he put it on, he couldn't see out. It was too big. Jack, 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 you've got to help me. Jack, 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 Jack. Suddenly, Jack realised that it wasn't Mr. Daydream saying his name. It was his teacher. And Jack wasn't in the Wild West. He was sitting at his school desk. Jack said the teacher again. You've been daydreaming. It was true. He had. But boys and girls, do you know something? Daydreaming is more fun than history. The end. Boys and girls, daydreaming is more fun than history. Mr. Charlton is a primary school teacher and I can't agree with that because I absolutely love history. I love geography. I love maths and PE and science and music and languages. But most of all, I absolutely love reading. I love books. Children's books are my favourite and that's why I will continue to read as many books as I possibly can on Mr. Chelton's audio stories. I will see you all very, very soon on Mr. Man Monday or Little Miss Monday. Three, two, one. Bye, bye, bye.